Guys, I don't know if I will ever be this excited to review another book in my life. Well, actually, that's not true because Sister Soldier is currently working on Midnight 4, if I'm not mistaken. And so there will come a time where I'm this excited again. But today we are reviewing Life After Death. And I don't know if y'all can see the lips. Like, look at the lips on the cover. This cover is perfection. This cover has Winter Santiago written all over it. Sister Soldier has written part two to the coldest winter ever. I don't know about you guys, but I have read The Coldest Winter Ever multiple times. I grew up on it. I grew up loving Sister Soldier. I have read every book um, that Sister Soldier has ever published. Um, I've gotten to hear her speak, and maybe I'll share that story at the end of this video. I love Sister Soldier, y'all. Like, she does not disappoint. So, without further ado, let's get into the book review. So, again, as I stated, um, Life After Death, which is the title of today's book, is part two to The Coldest Winter Ever. The main character of this book, her name is Winter, Winter Santiago, who is basically hood royalty. Um, she just completed a 15-year bid at the beginning of the book um, because she wouldn't flip on her boyfriend, um, Bullet. She got caught in the car with um, some work and some weapons. And, you know, basically... She was loyal, ride or die chick, wouldn't tell. And so Life After Death um, picks up with um, Winter getting ready to get released. And not only is she about to get released, but she has a sweet business deal on the table that's going to make her a lot of money. And if you know anything about Winter Santiago, she loves money. She loves fashion. She loves being um, top dog or top B, but you know. Um, so the reason that the book is called Life After Death, and I'm going to try not to give away too much because guys, I really think you should read this book. And I know I say that in every book review, but honestly, like I'm not going to review a book I don't like because I won't finish it. So I'm probably going to recommend every book that I review on my channel. Um, but yeah, so without giving too much away, um, upon being released from prison, Winter, uh, finds herself dead. And um, this book is about her navigating the afterlife. Um, and in the midst of navigating the afterlife, she basically is caught in some sort of purgatory. Um, purgatory is the word that comes to my mind, not the word that the author uses, but that's the word that I'm going to use. She's kind of in between. She's not in hell. She's not in heaven. Um, she's like caught caught up somehow she basically tells us about her experience we get to hear all her inner thoughts um she describes in great detail how everything feels what it smells like um and some other very interesting details and one thing that i love in the beginning of the book is how when she dies, the first person or one of the first people she thinks about um, visiting is her father. And Spencer has this deep, deep love and deep, deep respect for her father, um, which actually is unhealthy. You'll discover why if you read the book. But I just adore that. Um, I grew up with my father. And so I can imagine being able to relate to her um, in terms of the love and adoration that she has for her father and wanting to be able to visit him and comfort him after her passing away. Um, she also talks about the love and admiration that she has for her mother. Um, now, unfortunately, her mother um, disappoints her in a huge way. And so I cannot relate to that part. Um, by the grace of God, my mother has never like hugely disappointed me. Um, the same love and respect um, that I have for my father, I have for my mother as well. And so I'm very grateful for that. Um, and... I can relate to Winter in many ways. Now, unfortunately, um, because I can hear Winter's inner thoughts, because I get to see her self-reflect, someone who I used to look up to when I was a child, because as I said before, I've read The Coldest Winter ever multiple times, I actually start to pity in this book. Um, I used to think that Winter was so confident and so beautiful and so sure of herself. And... 
Come to find out in this book, she is overconfident, too sure of herself, <laughs> and basically makes herself an idol. And I just, for most of the book, I can tell you I was not a fan of the main character. By the end, we kind of turn around a little bit and I start to see her um, in a new light. Even though I, I hated her for most of the book, Sister Soldier does a good job of not losing her humanity. And so, um, again, even though I hated her, there were moments where I felt remorse for her. I felt empathy for her, um, sorrow over her suffering. And I just, yeah, I was like rooting for her by the end and hoping for her redemption. I'm trying to think if, I leave, if I'm leaving anything out of the summary. I want to leave this book review really, really raw. And I don't want to change it because I really want to give you guys my authentic um, response to the book. Um, so yes, I hated her and I loved her and I hated her again. Then I loved her. Then I hated her again. Oh, another thing about this book is the introspection is deep. Like watching winter and how she lived her life really had me like grilling myself and wondering i'll be making the craziest facial expressions um really had me wondering like oh my goodness am i like this if you are a christian or muslim or catholic person you will be able to appreciate this book the symbolism in this book is so deep and so rich. I'd be sitting here till next year if I tried to describe all the symbolism in the book. Um, I really appreciated that part of the book and it certainly gave me a lot to think about. I left my church recently and I've been really struggling and battling with what I believe religiously, spiritually, um, and I've been really trying to work out uh, my faith. And so I also appreciated this book for that reason. Um, I remember like being or thinking that Sister Soldier was Muslim based off of um, some, you know, her all of her books that I read and even hearing her speak in person. But now I feel pretty sure that she is. I don't know why I'm sharing that, but whatever. I just I just think after reading this book that she's Muslim, and I think that she does a beautiful job of defining the power of God. Not that any of us can ever completely understand or completely define it. Um, but I just love her humility when it comes to referencing God. I love her um, this description and display of his mercy in this book. And um, I would love to have a conversation in the comments. Like, is there anybody else watching this video who loves Sister Soldier the way that, that I do, who has read all of her books, like I would really like to dive into that. Um, this, book's, this book also talks about a character named Midnight very briefly. And um, if you read The Coldest Winter Ever, Midnight is like the love of winter's life. And to be honest, Midnight has been the love of my life, my whole life, because he was like the first perfect man um, in a book. And so like my whole life, I have been like, ooh, midnight, ooh, midnight, ooh, midnight in every book. Um, and even in life after death, even the dead girl loves midnight and I still love midnight the same way the dead girl does. <laughs> I don't, and I don't know if novels like this, like are helpful or, or damaging to be honest, because I have not met anybody in real life who even close to compares to Midnight, which makes me pretty sad. But we get to see Winter like literally face herself in the book and literally answer for the things that she's done in her life, which is real deep. And which had me looking at myself upside the head like, sis, do you got these same problems? Yes or no? And if you do, what can you do to change it? Um... Like I said, Sister Soldier does not ever disappoint. So my evaluation of the book is that it's amazing. It should be a bestseller. It's very well written. Um, and true, she stayed true to the character all these years later. And I don't remember when The Coldest Winter ever came out. Um, but all these years later, she stayed true to the character. And she showed us kind of what was on the other side of all that, like, front. So... Again, like I said, when I was younger, I looked up to Winter. I thought she was the most beautiful, the most sophisticated. I thought she had, um, I thought she was royalty, kind of like how she describes herself. 
But when I'm able to see her for what she really is and maybe even see her how God sees her, I realize that actually her confidence was masking her um, some of her deep insecurities. Actually, she gave her power away all the time to other people, um, virtually rendering herself powerless. Actually, she never acknowledged um, or worshipped in the correct way where power actually comes from um, and who actually is the most sovereign um, and, you know, and the most uh, powerful. I guess those are the same words, but um, so I did really end up feeling sorry for her, like I said, multiple times in the book. But in the end, there's redemption. And in the end, she um, finds new perspective, I guess I'll say. I don't want to give the book away. But I think this story is beautifully redemptive. I think that it shows a lot of things that are true about human nature. I think that Winter struggles with a lot of things that my generation is struggling with and struggling with things that I wish that we would overcome. I've been listening to this song over and over again this week by Janae. Janae Aiko. Aiko. I don't know how to say her last name, but y'all know the, the only Janae we're talking about at this time, basically. And the song is called Frequency. And one, one of the lines in the song that I love is... Um, Bless my generation, give them mercy. And I really do think that, you know, especially reading this book and considering what Janae is expressing in that song or what I believe her to be expressing in that, in that song, that our generation needs a revolution. We need to change. I think that we need to acknowledge our shortcomings and face ourselves and overcome um, our problems. And not only do we need to overcome our problems, individually but we need to heal as a community and as a people and learn how to work together instead of always being at war with each other and i really really feel like those themes reign true in this book um i did want to share and this was really hard for me to do because there were so many um powerful lessons in this book but i did want to share just one quote from the book that i plan to carry with me um basically every day for the rest of my life um, and so the, the quote is, there is a razor thin line between love and worship. I just kind of want to, you know, I'll be pausing to think about that and to journal about it. But um, if you're watching this video and whether you're religious or not, I just kind of want you to pause and think about what do you worship? What do you give your power to um, that's actually not worth worship at all, to be honest? Um and, and there is a razor thin line between love and worship. Love is good, but worship, if it's, if it's misdirected or misguided, can be very, very evil and is idolatry. So yes, yes, yes. That, um, another 10 out of 10 recommends. I will probably read this book over again. Um, Honestly, I'm thinking about like once she comes out with Midnight 4, which I'm praying that she does, I might start taking a couple, maybe a month out of every year to reread all of her books. I did bring a couple other Sister Soldier books that I wanted to share with you guys um, because I think she's a powerful author, powerful author. I be tongue tied. Sorry. Um, she she speaks to me in a language that I understand um, being from the inner city, y'all know I'm from Chicago. She doesn't talk to me like pastor such and such or minister so and so. And they use all this lofty language and these big words that you don't understand and you don't can't get a good grasp of what they're talking about. Like the, the thing that I love about Sister Soldier most is she is so inspirational and so, um, smart but she hasn't lost touch with us right she still feels like my homegirl she still feels like my neighbor like my auntie like my grandmother she doesn't feel like this strange person that's like waving her finger talking down to me and I really really love that about her about her um and also um that brings me to share her non-fiction book 
Um, her nonfiction book is called No Disrespect. Um, sorry, y'all, my ring light is making a bad glare. But yes, her nonfiction book is called No Disrespect. It's about her life and growing up and going and going to college and kind of how she arrives where she is as um, this amazing author um, and multidimensional woman. And what I love about her nonfiction book um, is the relatability. Like she literally is a hero of mine who has fallen for some of the same tricks that I have and survived it. And she didn't just survive it, she's thriving and she's making her own way in the world. And I suspect that she will be unforgettable. Um, and so I really, really love this book. I really cherish it. Um, it's one of my favorite books ever. <laughs> um, all of her books are my favorite book books ever, to be honest. So if I had to compare any of her books to themselves, it'd be really hard to pick. Um, I really did like Life After Death. Um, so far though, I don't know. I think A Moment in Silence might be my favorite. Now, A Moment in Silence is her third book in the Midnight series. So, um, she has The Coldest Winter Ever, which is about the main character, Winter. Um, and then Life After Death, the book we just reviewed and talked about is part two to The Coldest Winter Ever. Um, she also has a book about, uh, Porsche who is Winter Santiago's little sister, and that's called A Deeper Love Inside. I also read that book. It's also amazingly beautiful and relatable for young Black women. Um, then she has the series of three Midnight books. I love Midnight. So much is indescribable. She also has um, speeches and other um, things that you can find on her about the internet, but um, these are her, her publications. Um, that I just mentioned. So yes, I have a story about this book that I am dying to tell you guys. So let's take a peek inside the cover. Sister Soldier signed this for me. Like I, I almost don't even like, it don't even say nothing spectacular, but I almost don't even want to tell y'all or show y'all what it say. But I just basically want y'all to see like that this is her signature right here at the bottom. Yes. So she signed this for me on January 24, 2017. Let me tell y'all what I had to go through to get this signature. Okay, so I was living in Oklahoma, but I had someone um, close to me that was living in Kansas City. So I get a phone call like, hey, Sister Soldier's going to be in Kansas City on such and such date. Y'all think I didn't drive in five hours to hear her talk for 45 minutes? Yes, ma'am, I did. Y'all think I didn't stand in line for her to sign my book? Yes, ma'am, I did. And I'm going to keep this book forever. This book is dirty. Oh, like it's starting to tear up. I don't care, sis. Like anybody who knows me know, God forbid if something happened to my house, I'm getting my dogs and my and my signed sister soldier book, okay? I'm, I'm letting my cell phone, cell phone burn. All my clothes, I don't even care. I just want this book and everything else is replaceable, but not my pink Bible and not this sign sister soldier book, okay? And not my dogs. So yeah, um, that's the review. I cannot wait until midnight four. I love midnight still. I'm happy that winter um got it together and um I hope we can get it together as a people, as a generation. I'm trying to think, is there any other quote that um, that I wanted to share with y'all? It was really, really hard to pick a quote out of this book um, because of all the deep life lessons. I think that's why it was really hard for me. Um, so I tried to pick something that resonates um, with me. And so the reason I picked that line about worship, there's a razor thin line between love and worship. Um, I was telling some, one of my maybe one of my homeboys about this this week um is because i have crossed the line between loving someone and worshiping them many times and um whenever you guys get to hear my sandpaper and salt poem in that poem um i think there's a there's a line that that says um i made false gods out of men built toy soldiers on the altar of my back 
and kneel down to worship them like they could knight me a woman. And so um, if you read this book, um, you'll understand even more why I say I can literally relate to Winter. Um, I want to keep this review PG-13, but that line, um, kneel down to worship them like they could knight me a woman. I think me and Winter did the same thing um, multiple times there and it was unfruitful and, um, you know, not in the right context or with the right person or people. So, um, yes. Um, now I am going to read this, this, uh, I am going to read a few more lines from the book. <clears throat> I do want to give you a warning that if you don't like profanity you might not want to hear this and so um thank you for watching and you can exit here but the reason i want to share this quote is because we're in an age where social media has everybody fooled about what's actually going on and this quote is talking about basically like everything that glitters ain't gold just because somebody look like on the outside they have all the money and all the cars and all the beauty and all the power they really could be suffering on the inside where it actually matters the most right i think even in the bible it talks about how you should clean the inside of the cup um instead of just the outside or clean the inside of the cup first um either one of those look that up don't just take my word for it but yeah some people just shine in the outside of their cups but they still drink it from a dirty glass like that's whack that's not how it's supposed to be and so that's why i also wrote down to maybe share this with you guys and i'm gonna go ahead and read it just so you can, you know, soak up a little knowledge before you get a chance to read it. So, Winter is asking Pretty, why do you have all of this shit when you look like you don't have nothing wrong? And now this is Pretty responding to Winter. Didn't you know? It doesn't matter how a person or a thing looks. Although every single one of us loves to be, see, and stare at a pretty, beautiful person or thing, on the inside, a beautiful thing could be all fucked up like me. And then she goes on to say, but I like you because you see me as beautiful and name me pretty, even though I am all fucked up inside. She raised her left arm and flips her wrist. I saw you looking at the Rolex my father gave me. Usually it is right here covering up this, she said pointing out a deep, crooked, thick, dark scar. So obviously, you know, Pretty has slit her wrist multiple times and Winter didn't notice that because of the Rolex she was wearing. Just because something looks good on the outside doesn't mean it's all that it's cracked up to be on the inside. And um, so yeah, let's just all pray that we can be more beautiful internally than we are externally. Um, and that the inside of our cups are clean. And when you read this book, because you absolutely should, I just hope that you'll learn a lot and grow a lot. And I don't know, y'all. Like, to me, Sister Soldier has done it again. Like, and I'll drive five hours or 10 hours or 12 hours to see her again. And one day, I hope she'll sign all of my books. And I'll be showing my kids where Sister Soldier signed my books and like passing it down to them because I'm never giving it away. Um, so, yeah, I wonder if I even wonder if she would go as far as to say that this is her most important work. Um, and the reason I wonder that is because of the subject matter. I really see her heart for people. I really see her heart to introduce people to God, people that. <clears throat> may not ever pick up a Quran or a Bible. I really see her heart for them to reach out to them and to, and to say like, Hey, that there is one true God and, um, who wants to know you, who wants to love you, who wants to, um, allow you to see yourself with sober eyes, but then not stay that way, um, for you to improve and ultimately, um, become, become, become beautiful right by by cleaning the inside of your cup yeah don't don't take things at face value don't look especially if you're a millennial like 
Don't look at these people on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, whatever, and assume that they all sparkly clean on the inside and prim and proper on the inside and all dolled up and beautiful on the inside, how they look on the internet. The inside of their cup could be filthy, filthy, stinking, and a whole lot of other stuff that you wouldn't want to be if you knew what it was really like. I appreciated this book for allowing me to see the inside of Winter's Cup because like I said, I used to idolize her and be jealous of her for being so confident because I didn't have that confidence and, and you know, wanting to be like stylish like she was and rich like she was and come to find out baby girl was poor in confidence um rich in insecurity and her insides were not that beautiful um but there's always hope. There's always a chance for redemption. And I think you'll see that if you read this book. So I'm finally going to stop rambling. Um, usually I re-record my book reviews over and over again because I want to I wanna take out all the rambling. But I'm going to leave it this time, y'all. This is so precious to me and so raw and so real that I want to give y'all the raw. I want to give y'all the real. So yes, comment below if you plan on buying this book. Comment below if you bought the book, read it, and you want to talk on the phone about it because I want to talk on the phone about it. I'm desperate to find somebody else who read this book because that's how much I want to talk about it and really unpack what I learned. If you are religious, I think you should still read this book and don't be approved. Do not be approved. Like another thing that I like about Sister Soldier is her courage to write something like this, something this raw, this real with the language that she uses um, to reach her audience with no fear of judgment. Another thing I share with my friend that I thought about and got to reflect on while reading this book is all the things that I've been afraid to do because I wondered like, oh, could I consider myself a Christian if I still do this, if I still do that? And, I, and my friend is looking at me like, what's so wrong with those things? And the only thing wrong with those things is the perception of them. It's not like I'm, you know, I don't plan on going out in the world and like, doing anything horrible it's just you know i like lingerie i would like to own a, a lingerie line or a lingerie boutique but can a christian sell lingerie why not so i don't know this this gave me a lot to think about but i keep on saying i'm gonna stop rambling and i ain't stopped rambling yet you need to read this book you need to read it then once you read this book you need to read the the midnight series like this series right here especially if you a young man look if you a young man midnight ain't no bad way to be okay midnight ain't no bad way to be all right so love and peace to y'all and please comment below if you love sister soldier drop a black heart i'm gonna go drop a black heart because i love her and we can all we can all be fangirling in the comments together. Y'all have a good one.